but when these boils start happening repeatedly they become very painful they become large so it's a hydronitis subrotiva is a very common clinical condition nowadays not that common but it is now increasingly seen in clinics as far as medication is concerned what do you opt for i always opt for antibiotics when we are talking about drugs these are prescription medicines so never take any antibiotic without the prescription of a registered medical practitioner and especially from the specialty uh, something that's important then next step when these things don't work is when we have to start looking at anti inflammatory drugs yeah. but is there I a permanent know. solution to the problem so it's a hydronitis subrotiva is a very common clinical condition nowadays hmm. so uh, many people don't know about what is it actually exactly. they treat it simple you know like boils yes, in the axilla right. or groin yeah. so uh, i think we should discuss about hydronitis subrotiva that's so correct yeah, yeah can you please tell what is sure. hydronitis subrotiva yeah. so a uh, hydradenitis suppurativa or let's just call it hs it's an easy way to call it uh like you said is not that common but it is now increasingly seen in clinics it's an auto inflammatory condition and that means inflammation happens by itself we don't really know why and the areas it affects are areas that have a certain kind of gland called apocrine gland yeah. now these apocrine glands are present in the underarms in the groins around the anus under the breasts so these are the common areas where apocrine glands are present and in hs what happens it happens usually around puberty it starts these glands start becoming bigger they start getting occluded so it's called follicular occlusion yeah. right and then it starts becoming infected yeah clinically when we talk about hs uh, what happens typically is boils like you said most people think it's just boils but when these boils start happening repeatedly they become very painful they become large and the areas i mentioned they get infected that's the first time one as a doctor starts thinking about hs mm-hmm. right and there are three grades of hs so initially it starts with just sometimes a boil without any sinus mm-hmm. then it becomes boils with sinus and what does a sinus mean a boil that has a opening that comes out yeah. on top and releases the pus and grade 3 which is unfortunately not so great is when lots of such boils happen together and lots of interconnected sinuses Scarring and tracts from so that fibrosis occurs yeah exactly so if you would like to expand on the fibrosis and scarring in this uh basically uh, there will be puckering of tissues in the underarms and uh, there will be uh, atrophy and yeah, you so can it's like all yeah, contracted into contracted, a very messy yeah. situation yeah for the uh, because of the repeated infection and mm. basically uh, when we go for the culture it is a mis- mixed kind of infection yes 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 so that's that's, that's very important uh, yeah, the reason behind uh, uh, increase in this condition i guess it would be due to uh, you know like sedentary lifestyle that's and right. obesity that's correct okay the uh, because of the you know friction and folds yes. these are the most common areas affected yeah that's a so, very important point because obesity insulin resistance yeah these are the you know background around which yes. hs happens that's yeah. that's correct that's correct so Then, what is your approach once you do you need any tests for example for hs uh, uh firstly it is a clinical diagnosis like when we look for the you know in the underarms and groin area found uh, microcomedons and yes. multiple boils and especially the history of repeated infections that's correct so bar bar uh, if people yeah. are having those kind of cysts yeah. and boils that's kind uh, of one can go for uh, cupus culture if they want yes. to uh, for mainly it is because of the sensitivity for the drugs that's correct only. that's absolutely correct yeah yeah so i think uh, again in this condition again we have to talk about lifestyle yeah so primarily weight loss reduction of sweet and sugar intake and local factors like maintaining hygiene, hygiene. wearing yeah. loose cotton clothing avoiding sweating that that's yeah. very important but when it comes yeah, yeah lifestyle uh, when we wear tight jeans and tight tops that's these correct. are yeah that's because true. accumulation of sweat and friction repeated friction that's may worsen right. the condition of the patient that's right yeah. as far as medication is concerned what do you opt for uh first line i o- always opt for antibiotics okay tetracycline group of antibiotics and topical so that can be topical or oral oral, oral and antibiotics. topical i give clindamycin okay. and antibacterial like uh, benzoyl peroxide is one of my favorite right. drugs for hs exactly but for the audience that's listening to us uh, when we are talking about drugs these are prescription medicines so yeah. you obviously should not, not be because Dr uh, Neha just mentioned the phenomenon of um, antibiotic resistance. Yeah. And so we don't want you to go purchase antibiotics yeah. and consume it by yourself. Never take any it. antibiotic without the prescription of a registered medical practitioner Absolutely. and especially from the specialty.
Correct. That's correct. Yeah. So that's 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 uh, something that's important. Then next step when these things don't work is when we have to start looking at anti-inflammatory drugs. Yeah. So there are certain drugs like say Dapsone and yeah. Colchicin. These have got some evidence of use. But these days there's one very, very important category of drugs called biologics. Biologics, yeah. These are injectable drugs and they actually act, they have got very targeted action. So they act at right where the inflammation is yes. happening and they block the inf inflammation and they give relief for a longer time. Yeah. But is there I a permanent hope. solution to the problem? Uh, According to me, hair reduction will be oh, yes. treatment of... Yes, that, that yeah, helps. It, certainly. Yeah, it will help. It will help, it will help. And um, finally, when nothing actually works, if in fact it's a very, very, you know, when I mention grade 3, if it's grade 3, then you have to go, to for, go surgical. for surgery. Yeah. So surgery is the last option. Last resort, yeah, yeah, yeah. But there's but, good hope in terms of starting treatment early and preventing yeah. recurrences so that you don't get to that stage. Yeah, but, and lasers also have good results. Yes. Like, so hair removal lasers the, like diode, they also have good result in HSK. Yeah, the, yeah, the logic behind it being that you know you reduce the hair, so the surrounding glands will also reduce yeah. in size, and therefore inflammation will not yeah. happen. Yeah.